Hi, folks. Thank you so much for staying. Glad to see you all. Uh, I'm not going to read from my book, The History of White People. I'm going to talk about it a little bit and then leave some time for questions. And if you have a question, please use the mics. So if you already have a question, you can go to the mic now. I often get asked, uh, why did I write The History of White People? as if my body would stop me f from any area of inquiry. I'm a historian and I write on what I want. I was thinking when I started this book, uh, back in the end of the 20th century, why are white people called Caucasian? Have any of you asked yourself that? Do you know why? No. And this was when the rush, well, it's still happening. The Russians and the Chechens and Chechnyas and uh, the Caucasus were having tremendous struggles. So why are white Americans called Chechens? Well, I did find the answer. Uh, the answer took me to Germany. Took me to Germany in the 18th century. Now, the idea of race was invented in the 18th century. It doesn't go back to antiquity. There were not white people in antiquity. But since so many people thought that, I thought I should address it. So my book actually starts with the Greeks and the Romans and their commentary on the people who became Europeans. And what the Greeks and the Romans discovered were people who lived in various ways. For the Greeks, they talked about what we call culture. And for the Romans, who warred in various ways, because the Romans were imperialists and were very interested in who was a good fighter and who could help and who had to be vanquished. I followed this German idea into the United States via Madame de Stael, who was a French intellectual, and Thomas Carlyle, who was a British intellectual, and Ralph Waldo Emerson. So I spent a long time with Ralph Waldo Emerson, who was the kind of genius of 19th century white race theory. Ralph Waldo Emerson didn't have a great deal to say about black people, but he had a lot to say about white people. Now in the 19th century, the idea prevailed that there were many white races. So there were people who were considered white. No one questioned their whiteness. Very clearly, the Irish were white. Very clearly, people descended from English people or Scottish people were white or German people, but they belonged to different races. They were white, but they belonged to different races. So for instance, the Irish Catholics were thought to belong to the Celtic race, and people descended from English people were thought to belong to the Saxon race, and the Saxons were better than the Celts. It was not until the middle of the 20th century, which many of us remember vividly, that the idea of one big white race came into being, in which everybody was who was white was the same as everybody else. And it's not an accident that that happened through politics. It happened through the national mobilization of the Great Depression, the Second World War, and the federal policies crafted after the Second World War. So one big white race is an idea based in politics. My book is called The History of White People. Let me say a few things that it does not do. It does not talk very much about people who are not white. There's very little about African Americans, Indians, uh, Asians, Latinos, people of color. 
They do appear from time to time, and they appear very much at the end, but it really is a book about the construction of the idea of white races. It's not a book in which I get to beat up white people for the bad things they've done to others. And when I started, sometimes people would say to me, are you writing it as a black person? And I would say, I would get huffy, and I would say, I'm writing it as a historian. But I realized that what they meant, are you going to use this book to settle scores? No, I don't settle scores. It's not about what white people have done to others. So it's not very much about black people, which is what we usually think of in the United States when we think about race. When people hear the word race, they automatically jump to African American history or to black people. This is not my book. What I did learn was that race is an idea that is used to create at worst, to create bad separation and to rank people and to stigmatize. It can be used as a tool of hatred. It can be used as a tool of racism. Sometimes race is a source of pride. It can be a source of identity in which people rally around and find themselves together in difficult circumstances. It can be a response to racism, racial pride. But wherever the situation occurs, race functions to identify difference, to separate. Even at best, it separates. And it's always used loosely, but it says these are people who are permanently this way, and these are people who are permanently that way. Sometimes it says these are people who are permanently like this and like that. So I learned as I worked on this book about 10 years that whether the races in question are colored or the races in question are white, that race is a tool of differentiation and separation. Someone asked me uh, when I was doing my book tour earlier this year if I favored a national, a national debate on race. Let me ask you, let's take a vote. Do you think it's a good idea for us to have a national discussion about race? If you think yes, put your hand up. If you think no, put your hand up. If you're not sure, put both hands up. <laughs> we got a lot of not sure, yeah. Um, if you had asked me that before I worked on my book, I probably would have said, yeah, it's a good idea because we need to clear the air. But then when I realized how these ideas, and race is an idea, it is not a biological fact, it is an idea. As I worked on the history of this idea, I began to change my mind. And I now no longer favor the idea of a discussion of race. I would much prefer that we had a discussion of the various conditions, concerns, actions, thoughts, opinions, wishes that we share. I would much prefer that we de-emphasize difference and re-emphasize likeness. I much prefer that we work, thank you. I much prefer that we think about what holds us together so that in this moment of national crisis, we can work together. I want to stop here with the word together and invite questions or comments.